Time to put the logic in our blueprint to the test now and make it actually drive the location of our sliding door component, something that can be done with just a few key nodes. To make a start, we will need to be able to access the information that our door component contains. And so coming to the components tab, we can drag our auto door L component onto the graph view. And then after dragging from its output and releasing the mouse button, type the word relative into the search field and then add the get relative transform node from the transformation section of the list that appears. Because our components are basically sub objects of our actor, when we drag one onto the graph, we are actually creating a reference to the component, meaning we gain access to a number of its parameters and so have the ability to use them to our advantage. In this case, we want to access the get relative transform node that allows us to both see and adjust the components X, Y, and Z axes relative to its current position. At this moment in time, the information we have access to is high level. And so we need to dig down a bit. After right clicking on the return value output of the node, then let's choose the split struct pin option after which we can right click on the return value location and choose the same split struct pin option from the list. There are times when we will want to work with transform information as a whole when dealing with a component. But as in this instance, our sliding door only needs to slide along just a single axis, splitting our pin structure gives us exactly what we need. So we have the information that we need, but now also need to tell the blueprint what to do with it. After dragging from the auto door L reference in our graph, let's release the mouse button, type set relative, and then add a set relative location node to the graph. After which we can hook our timelines update output to the new nodes execution input. We can now start to set the doors location based on the two parameters that we are storing in the lerp node. Once again, though, for this to work, no matter what orientation the door is in, we are having to use the relative version of the node so as to ensure that the door will slide correctly, even if placed at odd angles in the level. As we still need to dig down to even lower levels of information, let's right click on the new location input of the relative location node and then choose the split struct pin option again. Once again, we will only want to change or affect the Y axis. And so the inputs need to be split in order to give us correct access. Even though we only want to change the one axis though, we still need to make sure that we aren't leaving the other two axes inputs blank, as this will cause our blueprint to treat them as having no input, which would actually change their location. To ensure that this doesn't happen, we can pipe the return value location X and Z outputs on our get relative transform node into the corresponding inputs on the set relative location node. As our X and Z axis won't be changing, given that we will always want the door to align to the frame mesh, we can use the original X and Z positions to keep the sliding door in place. Next up, we need to use the new location float values that we have. And so let's pipe the return value of our float lerp node into the new location Y input on our set relative location node. Although the X and Z axis will stay put, we most certainly want the Y position to update so as to produce the sliding animation, which is why we are piping our updating Y float value into the new location Y input. And with that, we have created our door animation. If we were to test the level and walk up to the door, we should, in our case, see the left door open and close whenever the overlap and end overlap events fire. Although I will save testing until after we have set up the animation for our second door. 